The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Then after the resurrection, whilst they were going to church, to the synagogue, then Peter said, this man asks for arms. Give me something, please. You know, I'm crippled. I'm a lame person. I cannot walk. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, the legacy that I have received, the name that has been bequeathed to me from the resurrection power, I do give in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankle became strong. Now when you read this, especially from the King James, so when he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk, the Bible said he lifted him because he was not expecting an inch that he would mention the name and the man will keep sitting. So when he said in the name of Jesus, walk, maybe the man was looking at him, say, Madame, for sorry. Sorry. He jumped on his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple court, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with the wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, now listen to what he's going to say. Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. You are witnesses of this. Now the big one, verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him. As you can all see. By faith in the name of Jesus. It is Jesus' name and the faith in that name that this man stands here walking, jumping, and praising God. The name Jesus. See, recently we went somewhere and it was question time. And we're talking about how to get people into church on Gospel Sundays. And then somebody made a contribution. And that we must also, in our quest to possess the nation, target the fetishes. Those in the shrines and all that. The fetish people we call the traditional or the fetish priests. Then he said that, and she targeting them, it is technical. You need some skills. Our fathers, they didn't even consider them as powerful. 
And then today, you are saying that, what is technical about bringing a fetish man to Christ? Eh? Look at the way we are disturbing our generation. People are always asking for, what is the new way of doing things? It is not about the method, it is about you. That your eyes of understanding be enlightened. Our fathers drove the tigaris, and today you are telling us that winning t- a tigaris is technical. What is technical about telling the fetish that, my friend, your God is a dead God? May God quicken us again. We need to wear our strength. And may God open our eyes and go out there and change our generation for Christ. Now, when this thing happened, Peter and John were arraigned before the big men of the day. And they asked them a question. Ask chapter 4, verse 7. Let's go and look at the question. This one was the first question that they had to answer. Don't know whether this one was a technical one. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? By what power or by what name did you do this? And then Peter will answer them. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the difference, my brothers. That is the, Peter is not a superman. Even the Bible says, Elijah who called fire from above, he was a man just like us. And he prayed. It is a spirit power that is causing the difference between us and them. But the spirit is still available. Christ is in us. We only need people who tarry and wait upon God, who are not willing to rush out of church. When it is 11 o'clock, they get jittery because they want to go and watch Manchester and Arsenal. They get jittery. Peter failed. If the Holy Ghost said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, by whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Just know this. And this name is available for us. How many of them? They were 12. About 120 around that time. And they were turning their world upside down. And look at our numbers. And darkness is engulfing our world. And we say we have the light. May we be filled by the power of the Holy Ghost. So that we can also tell them, understand and know this. You see, if this supposed dead man's name is causing people to walk, then you can't say he is dead. He is alive in his name. Then, if this man's name is causing people to walk, then names are not just for identity. Let me say that again. Names are not just for identity. Names carry authority, power, and the character of the person who bears the name. You see, let me just give you some. If you, you have done a PhD and you are a doctor and you are called Kwame Nkrumah and you are a Ghanaian, it will be better to change your name. Because the name Dr. Kwame Nkrumah has been effectively taken. You see, so you, you, you worry yourself. Nobody will recognize you. Anytime you say Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you say, huh? Do you, do, you, do you relate to the president of Ghana? So change your name. That is why the chiefs, when they go into the throne room and you want a name like Osetutu, because Osetutu is a revered name. So what they do is that they add numbers. So Osetutu, they say, I like the second. 
Because now you have to brand the second for yourself. Otherwise, I'll say to you, it's a revered name. Names do not just come because of identity. You see, so you have to work hard on your name. When your name is spot, you have no reason to live. Go and ask those who have committed suicide. Ask them. Some shame that they anticipate coming. That is effectively going to destroy their name. Instead of waiting for that shame to come and kill them, they kill themselves. You must carry yourself well because your name is not just for identity. It is more than that. All that you are is vested in your name. Sometimes you want to have a pen to write. And then there is this pen on the table. You are looking for a pen. You pick the pen and then someone says, Hey, this pen belongs to Then you put it down. Sorry. You will salute the pen unconsciously because the pen bears someone's name and the authority and the character of that person rubs on the pen. Those who have big names, you don't see them in the banking halls, yet they deposit and they withdraw. There is no need for them to go there. No. You, they, 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 sometimes they can even wait at the tail when they know that the banks have closed and then they will call when they call such people they mention their names first I am so so and so you see that when you are at the receiving end you hold the receiver if it was maybe um, maybe a supervisor who came there and said hello then he said, I'm so sorry. So, say, sorry, I, I, can I get you the manager? He said, yes, I'm waiting. Then you, you realize that the man is not there, but see the name in the house. Yeah. So names are not just for identification. I, I'm, I'm telling you for a fact. Even God, the Bible says, he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. See how God is protecting the name? For his name's sake. So names are not just for identification. It is more than that. They carry so much authority. Then the manager comes to take the receiver. Say, I'm so and so say, sir, please can I help you? Say, yes. I want to fetch some money. Um, have you close? He knows they have close. But listening to what the, the manager is going to say, say, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, I know, sir. But he knows they have clothes. If it were me, they would have shut the door. At you. Then the man comes again. He says that I want to, um, I'll ask my driver to come. Will it be okay if he comes in an hour's time? Then he says, oh, say it will be okay, even if it is two hours. Yeah. Then he says, okay, then we shall be there at 6 30. The manager will wait and wait, and wait. The man is not coming himself. The driver comes with the man's name. The driver comes with the man's name. Now listen, if you are talking about names, but this name Jesus, is not like that name. It is, it is higher than any other name that can be given. What authority do you think this name carries? He doesn't need to be around on this planet Earth. His name is enough. His name is enough. Whatever he can do, his name can accomplish same. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Hmm. You see, when the angel said he shall be called Jesus, he wasn't saying anything special because Jesus was a common name. But why has this common name become so great a name? Colossians 4 verse 11, please. Colossians 4. Are, are we together? Colossians 4 11. Jesus, who is called Yastus, also sends greetings. So there was somebody called Jesus. That is why Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah. He's just trying to identify this particular Jesus. Because there were so many Jesuses. 
So when the angel said his name shall be called Jesus, it wasn't saying anything wonderful. It was an ordinary name. So the angel said, I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He is not here. He is risen. Because you have to qualify the Jesus. Because there are so many Jesuses. So Peter was careful to say that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. But how come that this name has become such a revered name? Dr. Charles Blair said this in 1997. I heard him at Laboni Park when he accompanied Morisello on a mission. And this is what he said, and I kept it in my spirit up to today. He said, the bigness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he is willing to pay to achieve it. The bigness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he is willing to pay to achieve it. How big someone is, is determined by the cause he lives for. For many of us, we live for different causes. And if you, you, you calculate, you will see that you are on this planet, you are in Accra. But you see, the, the places where you, you, you trek, it's like a triangle. If you like, reflect and check. Some of us are here, and because our jobs are not in Kaswa, you have lived in Accra for 20 years, but some of you may not even know Kaswa. Some live for a cause. But how big a person is, is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he's willing to pay to achieve it. He lived to save humanity and he determined to pay the price to achieve that. Philippians 2 from 5. Let me jump for the sake of time to 9. Philippians 2. Therefore, God exalted him. The therefore means as a result. God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now this should go into your spirit. So when you mention the name Jesus, believe that every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, God also. So he didn't just give him the name. It was as a result of what he did. And God lifted his name above every name. That at the mention of the name Jesus... Things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth should bow to the glory of the Father. Hebrews 1 verse 4 says this. Verse 3 and 4. Hebrews 1, 3 and 4. The sun is a radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. I think we have talked about that. Now look at the big one, verse 4. Can we read verse 4 together? So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. He has inherited a superior name. But one would have thought that he was born with the name Jesus. If he had inherited the superior name, it could be something like Yakubu. But the name was not changed. The same Jesus. How, what, what is going on? You see, now, it is like maybe the president of the republic. I don't suspect that when he was in class one, his name was different. I don't suspect. I don't also think that of course, we all know, it's quite recent, when, that when he was campaigning, his name was different. The same name. 
But today, you can't just say anything like that against that name. When he's coming here with the same name, they can come and say that the, His Excellency, President Nana Adudankwa, is coming. Now, let's say that he's coming to join the service. And he's coming at this very time that I'm preaching. They will bring the name before his face will come. But when they say he's coming, he, he has decided to fellowship with you because he was on his way here and he just decided that there's a church here, so he's coming. When they bring the name, I'll stop preaching. And then there is an executive member here. I'll go and say, so Dan, what do we do? He said, the man is coming. Also, then we begin to uh, wonder where he's going to sit. Then people will come and ask us, where is he going to sit? They will say, this seat. Then they will use some machines to find out whether the seat is safe. And then they will ask, who is going to sit by him? Then said the pastor, make sure that no foreign person sits by him. They organize it. Meanwhile, the man is not yet here. And then when he comes, he comes with a convoy. People accompany him. That is what the Bible says that when we meet, we are in a company of innumerable angels because the man is here. If the president of the republic will come and will come with people, when he comes, he comes with them. You don't have any idea the atmosphere in which we are. This, this we don't play here. That is why sometimes I get a bit disturbed. People bring their mobile phones here. And they receive calls. And sometimes the, the ladies, crack, crack, crack. You goes out without any reference to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Takes this phone call. And then when he comes back, he says it was a foreign call. Foreign call. <laughs> now listen. It is these things that is disturbing the church. Because we don't even understand what it means to meet at, at his feet. We don't. If the president were here, you wouldn't behave that way. How much more the king of kings and the lord of lords. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion. That is the church. To the city of the living God. Why? Because he is here. Wherever two or three are gathered in his name. He is here. The heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. They are not singing the national anthem, but they are praising God. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of, of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than that of Abel. This is where we have come. We have gathered around his name. We have gathered around his name. And the angels are here. The angels are here. Hmm. The angels are here. So one would have thought that he should have changed his name. But like the president, it is the same name. But now the whole authority in Ghana backs the name. The whole authority in Ghana backs that name. And Hebrews says that he has received a superior name. What it means that the whole heaven and earth backs that name. That name has been singled out to be the name that every other name should bow to. What is important is who gave the authority. You see, you cannot come and say that I'm the president of Ghana. Who will believe you? Where were you sworn in? Have you carried that afna before? You don't, you have to be sworn in by an authority. When Jesus was still alive, some people went to him and asked him, by what, what authority are you doing this? And Jesus said, okay, I will also ask you, John's baptism, it was from where? Who gave John the authority? And the people went to confess. So if we say that this, the people will say this. 
if we say this, the people will say this. Let's go and tell him that we don't know. <laughs> then they went to him and they said, we don't know. Then uh, he also said, I will also not tell you. He didn't say, I don't know. I said, I will not tell you. So authority is always questioned to find out the source. So when you're talking about Jesus' name that has been given, the question is, who gave him the name? You have PhD. You say, oh, praise God. From where? Then you say, University of Suhum. Say, University of Suhum. University of Suhum. <laughs> say, University of Suhum gave you PhD. So you see what I'm talking about. Who gave him that superior name? The Bible says, therefore, God also. Gave him the name that is a source of his authority. And that is why when he rose, he says, all authority has been given to me. By who? By God. And he said, therefore, you also go in the authority. Why are we sitting down? When he says we should go. The name Jesus will cause differences at your workplace. The name Jesus will raise the dead. There's life in the name Jesus. There's no need to be singing about the name just like that. No. The name has to be used. Peter said, what I have, I give. So your marriages are not working because you are not applying the name Jesus. Your marriages are not working because Jesus is not mentioned in your home. You are not invoking the presence of that name. You have never held the hand of your spouse. Then let us pray, Jesus. Please come and take charge. Jesus, take charge. All forces that war against our marriage, we bind them in the name of Jesus. You have never done that because you have gone to school. The first thing that comes into your mind is to seek a lawyer. You never brought Christ and the name Jesus into the equation. You, sought, you started seeking for lawyers. Because these days, the word incompatibility has moved from the law court and is now seated in churches. And counselors are telling us that you are not compatible as if they match human beings. You see, when you marry someone that you share many things in common with, you may not even enjoy your marriage. You see, Come to the Bible. If God gives you someone, he's going to give you a helpmate. Somebody who is going to complement your weakness. So if you are talkative, he's going to give you somebody who does not open their mouth at all. So that you will learn that in this world, you don't always open your mouth. You might, and then you also learn that in this world, we talk. And then when you marry, how you can set the marriage up, that is the the beginning is quite difficult. You realize that there will be some kind of irritation because you are not like her and she is not like you. But little by little, with the name Jesus in support, you work it out. You work it out. You work it out and it will work. I have been so changed by God because of my wife. Because I used to be one plug. <laughs> but my wife taught me that in this life you cannot be one plug. You have to balance yourself. You have to balance yourself. So please, let me just try and end. What a name that we have. It suits our sorrows, it heals our wounds, it drives away our fear. But we don't use this name. We don't care about this man who hung on the cross just so that we shall have his benefit. But we don't care about him. When you wake up in the morning, we don't even think that he's around. We just rush to work because the manager is calling us. We don't even say, Jesus, I thank you for this blessed day. What are we going to do? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he said, Father, I want to thank you for the name Jesus. When there is fear coming to you like clouds of darkness, just ward it off by the name Jesus. And one Jesus is enough. God bless all of us.
Oh, la basande de 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 basande. Biriando, bosende, bakayande, masondo, bakiriando. Father, we want to bless you. Let us begin to roar. Let us begin to roar. Let us begin to pray. And let us pray in the name of Jesus. Bo la batande de 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 basande. Biriando de 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 babolo mokotondo. Now we want the singers to come. We are going to worship and bless the name. We are going to sing about Jesus. And as we sing about Jesus, we shall soon move into prayer. And we'll be praying in the name of Jesus. Now pray with understanding. Know the name. The Bible says, they that know the name, they will put their trust in this name. Those who know the name. 